Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. York Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Thursday, November 18th, 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to Colossians, chapter 4, verses 2 through 9. Brethren, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. And pray for us also that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear as I ought to speak. Conduct yourselves wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all about my affairs. He is a beloved brother, and I a faithful minister and fellow servant, and is a faithful minister and fellow servant of the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. And with him, Anisimus, and the faithful, beloved brother, who is one of yourselves, they will tell you everything that has taken place here. And today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 16, verses 1 through 9. The Lord said this parable, there was a rich man who had a steward, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your stewardship, for you no longer can be a steward. And the steward said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the stewardship away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that people may receive me into their houses when I am put out of the stewardship. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, Take your bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. And he said to another, And how much do you owe? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. To him he said, Take your bill, and write eighty. The master commended this honest steward for his shrewdness, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, Make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous mammon, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal habitations. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Now, I'll be honest. I have no idea what this particular parable is trying to say. It's one of the most confusing ones that I've ever seen. And so, in order to get a little insight into it, I looked at a book that I have called the Bible and the Holy Fathers for Orthodox. That is a book that I have turned to numerous times in my time as a priest so that I can have some material that has been spoken of by other people. Today, we have a writing of St. Cyril of Alexandria, and I will read to you what he has to say about this particular passage found in his commentary on the Gospel of Luke, Homily 108. It reads, The sense of the present parable is something like the following. The God of all wills that all men should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, as is spoken of in 1 Timothy 2-4. 2 2 For this reason he also gave the laws a help, see Isaiah 8-20, according to the expression of the prophet. He also says by the harp of the psalmist, Be still and know that I am God, found in Psalm 45-10. And further, by his own mouth, the Savior of all says to those who possess worldly riches, sell all your possessions and give alms and make for yourself purses that you do not grow old, a treasure forever, unfailing in heaven. See Luke twelve thirty three. Is there then no way of salvation for the rich? The Savior has shown them a means of salvation in the present parable. They have been entrusted with worldly wealth by the merciful permission of Almighty God. According, nevertheless, to his intention, they have been appointed stewards for the poor. Yet they do not discharge their stewardship rightly, in that they scatter, so to speak, what has been given to them of the Lord, and they waste it solely on their own pleasures, and purchase temporal honors, not remembering God, who says, You shall open your hand wide to him, and willingly lend him sufficient for his need, whatever he needs, as is seen in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 8. Nor, moreover, Christ himself, the Savior of us all, who says, Be merciful, even as your Father in heaven is merciful, which is seen in Luke six, thirty-six. But they, as I said, make no account whatsoever for showing mercy to their brethren, but study only their own pride. And this is that which accuses them before the Lord of all. 
and of course upon the approach of death they must cease from their stewardship withdrawing them as it does from human affairs what therefore would christ have them do it is while they are yet in this world if they are unwilling to divide their wealth among the poor that at least they should gain friends by a part of it that there be numerous witnesses to their charitableness especially to those who have received well at their hands so that when their earthly wealth fails them they may gain a place in their tabernacles for it is impossible for love to the poor ever to remain unrewarded whether therefore a man gives away all his wealth or only a part of it he will certainly benefit his soul and saint john chrysostom also speaks of the same parable and he says basically the same thing the stewards are the wealthy of the world god is the one to whom they're going to need to give an account and so if they can give of their wealth to those around them so that those people may speak well of them in the heavenly courts then those too the ones who give the money in the first place the unjust stewards if you will may themselves find mercy with god because they have shown mercy on others that is the challenge i think it's a far easier thing to do to live humbly and to not seek out the riches of this world but instead to use what you've been given to the glory of god and to the well-being of the people around you it is far more better to do that in fact but at least there is an out there's always hope for the righteous and the unrighteous to find their way into the kingdom of heaven there's always hope for the saint and the sinner there's always hope for the poor and for the rich to be able to enter into the kingdom of god and this is a particularly important point because most of the time in the gospel of saint luke the poor are always the ones who are finding their way into the kingdom of heaven and the rich well they have had their reward as our lord says oftentimes in the gospel and so this does provide a way for those who are wealthy those who are not so centered on the well-being of the people around them yet to still find a way that they may themselves enter into the kingdom of heaven May God have mercy on us all because none of us know exactly whether or not what we do measures up to the expectations of our God. It is said in many places, to whom much is given, much is expected. And so there's always that open question, if we have done enough. And may we all, in the ways that we do our things and all the things that we say and do, all the ways in which we live, may we all ultimately reach that beautiful phrase from our Lord, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the kingdom of our Heavenly Father. May it be so. And may God bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.